Welcome to Real Coaching Radio, the podcast for coaches by coaches. We are here to teach you how to get the most out of your clients and yourself. This is where beauty meets the beast, brains meet brawn, and science meets, well, bro science. Welcome to Real Coaching Radio. different types of progressive overload so how to actually progress your training how to get fitter how to get stronger how to build muscle we're going to go through some of the techniques that we use today and kind of rate the ones that we think you guys should focus on the most and probably what people get wrong so without any further ado please enjoy the episode um give us a five star rating and review on itunes a review would be nice like i really like this podcast because it helps me to get fit and strong um something like that would be great you can't really do that on spotify but if you're listening on spotify by all means screenshot this put it on your story tag real coaching radio um at mark origin series at hat the body hat the mind on instagram we would very much appreciate it thank you so much guys enjoy this episode enjoy it enjoy it enjoy it we are real coaching radio I, one day, I'm going to have a room and a studio somewhere in some sort of facility with a microphone in where life would be easy and we just walk know. into a nice room. Our own little, own little studio. We're back in the wooden <laughs> yoga studio. Maybe that's the goal, our own little studio. That is like eventually where it's going to go, he says. We just got to make sure we do one every week. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it would be easier though. I think like having, I think having the ability to like kind of start doing more interviews and stuff like that going forward. Like I've got space and time now to be able to look at getting them sorted because I think before I was just so concentrated on like, I didn't have a system before. Mm. of how i was going to do things so this is quite good this is what my system is at the moment so every two weeks i change what content i focus on okay so the first two weeks at the moment like i basically just write my blogs from my blogs i create my posts Mm -hmm. and then i create videos around the blogs Mm -hmm. the first two weeks is blogs second two weeks is posts third two weeks is videos okay and it works so much better because like before i was going i gotta do videos blogs yeah posts, yeah all, all, of, of, all of it together yeah. yeah and it's like it was killing me because yeah. like <coughs> i think the structure side of it has been the hardest thing for me to find out because because it always changes but it's like how do you get control off of something that always changes do you know what i mean yeah and i guess it's well you're always just trying to do too much at once aren't you yeah and i guess that's what a lot of people do with training just try and do too much at once and that was a great segue. That was a really good segue. We are going to be talking about different types of progressive overload today and kind of, I guess, almost put them in a hierarchy, but give you a good idea of like different ways you can approach kind of making progression within your training and give you something to focus on as you leave. Mm-hmm. Um, if we are going to do a hierarchy, what would you say is number one? Well, I, I know people are going to have a different opinion on this, like, but for me, like, it's at weight. Yeah. No, I, I, think, I think the running at weight with the caveat of standardize your form. Yeah, absolutely. Which basically means keep your form the same. And if your form is the same, week to week, you can add weight. So don't just add weight if it means you have to completely change the way you do the movement. Like every exercise is a skill. You want to perform the skill the correct way. And if you are going to go, oh, Mark said I got a progressive overload and add weight. So I'm just going to like not even think about the way I'm going to do that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about keeping the form as good as it can be. And like there's a range, but like good form and trying to keep that the same week to week as you do add weight. Yeah, because if you can't do that, you know realistically a form of progressive overload could be next week i'm going to do the same weight and just make it you know let's say your last two reps your form started to change maybe 
next week your your goal could be I'm going to keep the same weight and make sure those last two reps look like all, all the other reps did. And in some ways, that is a form of progressive overload. That's a great point, actually, because I find like for for us to, for, especially with clients, but for me to push to areas that I've not pushed to before, my form is probably going to deviate. Like yeah. when I get to those top end ranges yeah. of like, I'm going to try for, even if it's like a five rep max or a new one rep max, or I'm just going to try and do more reps on this weight. Like those last couple, they're grinding weights, mm-hmm. like grinding reps. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, and I almost think like if you're a, especially, you know, like let's say five sets of five or like three, that kind of thing. I think if you, I think if you're maybe like a little bit higher, not, not so applicable, but I think if you're definitely at the lower end of the rep range spectrum, we, <laughs> To a certain extent, if you're testing something max, I think you do want form to deviate because that's just going to highlight where your weaknesses are. That highlights areas that you need to get stronger and therefore highlights areas that you can improve on to be able to, next time you test, do better. So if I think, I think if you're testing and your form doesn't deviate, like, are you actually going heavy enough? Yeah, because that's, that's so true, actually, because... I never understood the idea of like accessory movements in the sense of like, well, I'm just going to bench press. Why would I need to add in a pause bench press? Why would I need to like add in different types of this exercise? Mm. And it wasn't until like I just figured out like anything over like 120 on a bench, my right shoulder just comes off of the bench. So like for me to get the bar to my chest as I'm lowering it down, that last inch to get to my chest, the only way I can do that, my left side stays tight, like my back's nice and tight, my right side, my right shoulder just goes boop. Yeah. And it's like, and then I get the shoulder pain, then I get the elbow pain, and it's like being able to like look at that now and go, oh, okay, so the way I progress this exercise is like, because I've realized, I've tested my forms deviating there, I can look back and go, oh, well I need to add a pause in, or I yeah. need to do some kind of, slow tempos to get it down to my chest yep but weight overall is i think so i think it's king yeah and the biggest thing i would say with weight progressive overload wise is just smaller jumps yeah i think this is this is where people this is this is the mistake people make when it comes to adding weight to progressive overload because they just think I don't know. I think I feel like people think when you say, "Oh, let's add some weight," it's just like, "Right, I'm going to add five kilos. I'm going to add ten kilos." Just like, you know, add a kilo. Yeah. Add one kilo. And genuinely, add one kilo because I think, it, it look at the look at how long you want to keep going for, and say say for example, we are basically when we are doing this, when we are progressively over- overloading, when we are adding weight. And we are going to get to those points where form starts to deviate. We want that to be at a place where it's just starting to deviate. Like it's not at a place where I literally cannot keep the same form. Mm. And if you take those bigger jumps, you're going to go from controlling a weight to not being able to control a weight very quickly. Yeah. I know for a fact I wouldn't do it because I'd get bored. But I would love to take bench press or something. And I don't know. Maybe start at about 80% and just do a single. And then every week, or well, maybe start a little bit higher, 85, 90%, do a single. And every week, just put a kilo on it for a year. So, and see if I can keep up with it. I'm, it's not that I'm doing that, but I'm practically, apart from like some weeks, I'm going to be taking that approach going forward yeah but i mean like so like keep the rep ranges the same like uh, everything yeah. just like everything, everything the same and just add a yeah, kilo and see if it, like just to see if you can stick with it yeah well i always think that because like when you say one kilo a week doesn't sound like a lot that's 50 kilos in a year yeah so like if you said to me add 50 kilos to your bench press i wouldn't yeah if i said all right i can add 50 kilos to your bench press in a year who's not gonna take that but like so here's a question why don't we do that because we we like variation, don't we? Yeah, and like the, we get bored and like because it because technically and like there will get to a time where you just cannot add any weight to the bar. You've, yeah, you've hit your max. Yeah, and like this is the question: and does 
this is, and you tell me and if you understand what I'm trying to get at. Does progressive overload, so like th- you getting stronger, is that like, is that because you've added weight each week or can you add weight each week because you're getting stronger? Does that make sense? Like which comes first, the chicken or the egg in the sense of like every week I go to lift a heavier weight. Yeah. Is that because last week I lifted this weight yeah. So then my body's adapted to make sure I can lift a heavier weight in the future. Mm-hmm. Or like, or is that, does that make any sense? Yeah, it does make sense. So there is something called the repeated bout effect, which the repeated bout effect is basically, you know, the, num- the number one priority of the human body is survival, right? Like do not die. So if you apply stress to the body, the human body, and it's quite hard stress, so like heavy bench press, and the next day there's loads of DOMs and you're sore or whatever, like your body's quite quickly going to respond and go, well, that hurt. I'm not going to let that happen again. And it will recover and get stronger so that like next time you do it, one, yeah, your nervous system has improved a little bit to be able to you know, synchronize and coordinate all of those muscles that are needed, joints that are used. Um, but secondly, from, yeah, it, it recognizes, well, we've done this before, like, I guess if you wanted to simplify it, we've done this before, it hurt before, like, it's not not going to let that happen again. Yeah. So does that, is that what you mean? Yeah, just, to, just in the sense of, like, be, like, your body's just, every time I do something, there's an equal and opposite, like, kind of reaction yeah, to what I'm it, doing because it's kind of like in the same way of but slightly different but in the same way of if you were to never change the weight it over time if you just do five sets of five yeah. at the same weight for 10 weeks yeah by the end of the 10 weeks it's just going to feel so much easier yeah, yeah. because it, the body's just like oh we've done this before we've yeah. done this before we've done this before yeah but the first week it might have been really heavy yeah, 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 and then week two, it's just like we've done this before. Like, let's not let that happen again. And that does seem to happen, doesn't it? Like yeah. when you kind of when you do go week to weeks using, if not the same the same weight, like the same rep ranges, and you do take smaller jumps. I find like there comes a time where I can take a big jump. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like I take small jumps, small yeah. jumps week to week, two and a half kilos like each side. Like if if that. Yeah. To the point of then when it comes to the end, like four weeks, I go. Oh, I'm going to test this out, and I gain like it's ten kilos has gone up, and it's yeah. like yeah. And weird. I th- and I think if you base it on that theory, then actually you probably don't need to go up every week because you could like week one is the shock. God, yeah. that was heavy. Body's response is well, that's heavy. Let's not do that again, or cause that much damage again. And then week two, let's say you did the exact same thing. You're not going to cause as much damage, but like your body's only had one exposure to this. So like realistically, it's not going to have adapted to, my God, this is really easy now on week two. Mm. So then I guess there's a question of like, could you just increase weight every other week? Well, would that, isn't that very similar to how weightlifting does their percentages in the sense of like, I've heard, I've heard like when I speak to Ali and Jasper, they talk about like, you have a certain percentage, which is like your quote unquote learning percentage Mm. where it's hard enough. So like you can't just throw the bar around, but like like heavy enough. So you can't just throw the bar around, but it's not so difficult that your like technique basically. Yeah. You're not going to start missing reps and that kind of stuff. So is it very similar in that sense of like, you're kind of, you have this working range where your body's like just, has to adapt to it before you can leapfrog to the yeah, next absolutely. stage. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and I think it does take a little bit of time. I guess there's going to be slight variations because although, yeah, every exercise is a skill, there is obviously like a continuum of what these skills are. And, you know, weightlifting is probably the most skillful yeah. movement with a barbell. So, therefore, like, there are like, they're, they're, they, are, they are purposely practicing the, practicing the skill yeah. Whereas if you're like bench pressing, for example, you're although you are practicing the skill, but you're maybe purposely actively trying to get stronger. Yes, got you. Yeah. So even though even though very similar goals because of the skill element within it, yeah, that's the thing that makes it more difficult yeah, to it progress just, the weight. There's more coordination required in a snatch than what there is in a, I suppose in a bench press. That's the same go of if you went all the way back down, like back squat, like 
to a leg press like yeah a leg press is so much easier to progress on because yeah. of that yeah absolutely but i think like i think adding weight is the main thing in that sense but like again standardized in your form would be kind of something to focus on um and like the increase in the increase in weight that will like increase your total like volume but your in total volume could also be increased by increasing the reps so like if you're not going to increase the weight, yep. you could increase the reps. Yeah, and, and I, I think you could almost, if you're well-trained enough, I wouldn't necessarily suggest this for a beginner maybe, but I think if you're well-trained enough, you could just sort of, you know, if, if there's a day comes where it's like, oh, I should be going heavier, but I don't really feel up to it, you could kind of like run off the fly a little bit and say, oh, well, I'll, I'll just keep the weight the same and I'll do, I'll do one more rep. Yeah. And the only reason I wouldn't suggest that to a beginner is because, not because it's not applicable to them from, from a physiological point of view, because it, it is still very applicable, but I think it maybe might just create a little bit of chaos because one week they're doing this many reps, next week they're doing this many reps. And I think if, like, if you're a beginner, you probably just need to learn that you yeah. need some structure and consistency whereas yeah. if you're a little bit more well trained you, you kind of like understand the chaos and the gray areas a bit better yeah yeah so like so if i was to come in as a beginner to stay with the same rep range to just to understand and get used to that because i'm gonna like exercises feel different at different rep ranges so because of the weight that you're going to be using so like as i start to keep the rep ranges the same i can progress week to week on the on the weight yeah but i also just think as maybe a more advanced trainer you probably or hopefully have a better perception in your mind of kind of like oh well i am quite i am a bit tired today so i might just do an extra rep as opposed to add more weight whereas i think like if you're a beginner you and you haven't really experienced what fatigue feels like in a gym properly if we're being honest you don't really know how to make those decisions. Yeah. And you could just be making those decisions because, like, I think there's a difference between feeling physically fatigued and tired that you don't really feel like you can add weight and just being like, I can't be asked. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I feel like there's a difference between that. It's really hard to be self-aware enough to know which end yeah. of the spectrum you fall yeah, on as well. Exactly, and and I think, but I think if you're a more advanced trainer and have more experience, you probably are putting yourself in a better position to understand whether, like, you're you're just being a bit of a bitch, or yeah, yeah, you are actually tired. Yeah, no, but that's and I think that's part of the reason. Like when I set my when I set my program up for people, like, are you when is when is new people like I, I do it with everyone because like for me i always give rep ranges for people to fall within um the reason i like doing that is because like it takes people a few weeks to figure out their weight mm -hmm. and like i'm just saying stick within this rep range but go for as go as hard as you can yep. on the weight you use so if i give a six to eight and you could do 10 reps well the weight needs to go up because yep. i want you to fall within six to eight and once they get to an idea of the weights that work for them within that rep range the basic rule that I give and the reason I give this is just because like it keeps them consistent in the fact of saying like some people are afraid to go up I, I kind of for me it it tackles two birds with one stone so two some people are afraid to go up in weight and some people want to go up and weight too much yeah so by giving a rep range and by saying to them I want you if I'm doing three sets of six to eight I want you to be able to do all three sets at the same weight but eight reps for every set the reason and then once you get that then you can up the weight yeah the reason i like doing that is because it stops the people who want to go too heavy going too heavy because they're like oh i can do more i can do more i can mm. do more it's like those are the people that especially beginners are likely to be like their form starting to deviate way more and then you have the people which are like could push further yeah and it just means like oh i've got a target that i can hit now like it gives them a bit more of a focus of like Oh, I know that I can do, I know I could get to 10. Yeah. So I need to up the weight. Yeah. It's just like it, for me, it like kills those two birds with one stone of like, you can increase your weight and you can increase your reps week to week, but you just have to hit these week in, on one week. You have to hit all sets at the top end of the rep range before you go up next week. 
Yeah. Because then it just keeps progression, progression, progression. It's like, it's such a nice way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's just, I think it's just a really clear and easy way for people to see progress because if you give that target rep range and people, you know, let's say that target rep range is six to eight, and on week one people hit six, and you're sort of right, well, next week just, just try and hit seven. Like, and that's a really easy target to give them for, to, to show progressive yeah. overload. Yeah. And then work your way up, right, next week hit eight. Yeah, easy. Like, and then, like, a week after that, if you feel like you're comfortable enough, right, now go up, go up in week. Yeah, and it's just like, it's funny because this stuff is so simple. Yeah. Yet so many people get it wrong. And but this is, I think, so like, I find it, I said to Jasper yesterday, I was like, oh, programming for bodybuilding is really easy. And he was like, why? And I was like, because I just write a program and they follow it for four weeks. Mm. And then we take out exercises they don't like or mm. exercises uh, or increase the difficulty of the exercise depending mm. on where they are with their journey. And he was like, do you not prescribe the weight? I was like, no. Because this gives them the ability to auto regulate, yeah, without like, but with the like pre understanding of, I've still got to try and beat or match net last week. Yeah, exactly. I I really try not to prescribe weights for people because, but just because also there are there are so many factors that come into play yeah. on how you feel on a day to day basis when you go into the gym and. And if there's somebody who's relatively new to training and it's just like, right, go heavier, go heavier, go heavier, go heavier. And on a day when they go into the gym and it's like, I've had a really bad light sleep. I'm not eating. I'm loaded up on caffeine too much to the point where I'm going the other way. I feel like crap. But I've got to do this really heavy back squat. Just realistically, I'm not getting any benefits out of that. I just do the same as you do. It's just kind of like, you're going to hit this rep range you're going to use a weight that is as heavy as your form allows. Yeah. And if it can be heavier than next week, last week, then great. Yeah. And it, it is so simple because like if, if we go back to the Adam weight thing and like the fact that we said you don't necessarily need to up your weight every single week, that would be where you kind of look at that and go, okay, so I don't necessarily need to up my weight every week, but like, I'm always going to try to do that. So I'm not going to like, I'm not going to get any, detriment if i don't up my weight mm. so it like it do you know what i mean it stops the kind of yeah. panic mode of like wait 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 yeah. just by having this kind of smarter approach of just like it doesn't actually matter yeah one thing i will say on that for uh, any beginners that are listening is kind of like if this literally is one of your first couple of weeks in the gym probably expect to be able to add weight each week and maybe expect to be able to add bigger jumps than a kilo each yeah. week because if you're really new to this you're absolutely nowhere near your your ceiling level of strength and the initial adaptations that's going to happen are going to be from the nervous system in terms of being able to coordinate and synchronize muscle tissue so your ability to add weight at the very beginning is going to be really really high like you'll be able to add a lot of weight to begin with and then you'll probably get i don't know four to eight weeks in and that's quite a big rep range but uh, quite, probably quite a big range sorry but depending on how yeah. hard you have been working those in those pre in those first couple of weeks probably four to eight weeks in you'll probably start to notice right well i'm not sure i can add five kilos or whatever so now you might be down to adding one kilo or you might be bound to down to keeping the weight the same and adding an additional rep like we've spoken about but as the, the more advanced you are, like adding weight gets harder yeah. because you're closer to your, your, your ceiling of strength. Yeah. And like if you're struggling to add weight, there's, and, you're, and you can't add any more reps, this is where for me, and you could tell me what, what would be your next step? What if you can't add weight and you can't do any more reps? How would I still make sure I'm progressing? So for me, the most natural thing from that is just like, just slow down a little bit. Yeah. Tempo. Yeah. Tempo for me would be my next one as well because slowing down an exercise normally means that we're going to be controlling it. Again, if we go back to what we said about like, think of think of getting to those top end rep ranges, my form's deviating a little bit. So it's like, okay, well, let's control it a little bit better. Yeah. And that's basically what slowing it down means. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, all, and, and, how that, and how that is causing progressive overload is essentially if you were to just take... I don't know, a set of 10 reps and your standardized form was kind of right. I'm going to do a two second eccentric, two second concentric. So two seconds down, two seconds up. 
And so therefore, a rep takes you four seconds. You're going to do 10 reps. A set's going to take you 40 seconds. If you now make that lowering phase last four seconds, but keep the concentric the same, so four seconds down, two seconds up, a rep now takes you six seconds. So a set of 10 is going to take you 60 seconds, which is 20 seconds longer. So the amount of time that your muscle spends under tension per set has increased. So therefore, that, you know, and that is a good way to add progressive overload. And, and also, I think, again, the same rules apply to this as what we spoke about with weight. You know, I know I just gave you the example of adding, doing a four-second eccentric on each, on each rep, but you don't have to do that. Like, you could just do a four-second eccentric on maybe the first two reps of each set or even the first set and then do the other, the other couple of sets just as you were normally doing them because you're starting to get tired and fatigue kicked in and you can't control that slow eccentric anymore. Uh, again, you don't need to just like drastically slow down all of the reps and all of the sets. Like, like if we're being like almost absolute, like just slowing down the first yeah. rep of the first set and then keeping everything else the same is a form of progressive overload. Yeah, you could probably do more than that, but it, that is still progressive overload. 100%. Like when I start to see, because I've had it a few times with clients actually, and I think I've done this without even realizing why i do that quite a lot i think but like i've had a client who i've gone i just want you to pause mm. for a second on the first rep or the first yeah. two reps at the yeah. bottom and it's purely just because i don't want to increase the weight yet because they're still a little bit unstable with the weight we're currently using but i do want them to like learn to control it better and still make progression yeah so it was like just by adding in like a slower slower on the way down or like just kind of changing the intent a little bit like i want to see a like an i an actual change of direction occur rather yeah. than just like yeah something which quickly flutters by yeah especially in that bottom position if we're talking about a squat for example especially in that bottom position because it's it's probably the weakest position for most people it's the position that people want to rush through because they don't feel strong there because it is the weakest position so therefore the risk of injury in that position out of the whole movement is probably the highest when you're you know right in the bottom of that bottom of that squat about to change direction just because your muscles are going to act in a very different way to, to perform the concentric so just slowing that area down and pausing there also just keeps the whole thing a little bit safer yeah and like the those those three are probably the main for me um they're probably the, they're certainly the most common aren't they yeah i think so and i think like they're the most commonly i use yeah to kind of progress people um what else what would be your next one um i guess so for me I, again i would say those three are probably like my main ones the others that we could look at are probably be ones that's just like nah, i'm not really too sure what order i'd put them in and also does it really matter what order i put them in yeah. um but if i was to choose one let's maybe say like we could start to decrease or actually maybe this might be the next one actually we could maybe start to decrease some rest periods okay why would this be your next one um i think just because oh because i get a little bit confused not confused but i i understand it in the sense of why that would help you progress but yeah i don't understand i don't understand why it gets used as much as it does because like i i I give different, um, I give different rest periods mm -hmm. recommendations on like and like use them as recommendations on programming to like kind of this gap to fall between. Yeah. But why would decrease in the rest time improve or progress someone? Um, just just because essentially their work capacity is going to go up. So. If you can do, if you can perform the same number of sets and reps again, but with less rest than what you had previously, then effectively your work capacity has gone up, and you know your volume is, is volume in a certain way, not direct volume. If we speak about it in terms of like sets, reps, and weight, like, but the amount of work that you do in a given amount of time is going to increase. Um, and for me, I would, the reason why I would choose this one next for me is because it's the variable 
that I can cause the least amount of damage. And what I mean by that, like, it's the variable where I can expose them to, like, the smallest amount of novel stimulus, whereas the other couple that we're going to speak about later on provide a much greater novel stimulus, which for some people might be too much. You know, if I was to say to you, yeah. you're going to do five sets of five, in your week one, you're going to have three minutes rest. And as we work our way through, I'm going to progress you to five sets of five. And we're just going to have, I don't know, two, two and a half minutes rest. I'm just going to take, thir- or, you know, or two minutes, 45, I'm going to take 15 to 30 seconds off you. In reality, that's quite a small chunk of time. Whereas like the other ones we're going to speak about, I think provide such a, such a much bigger new stimulus that the damage that it could cause to muscle tissue might might be too great for some people yeah that's really interesting i just like i find i find changing uh, like changing the rest periods like i use i don't i don't think i use them as a form of progressive of progression because i just use them as like a guideline to make sure that people like aren't all over the place to keep it consistent yeah so like because i find people will either want to go again after like 30 seconds 45 seconds they're ready to go again because they're bored or because they're bored they've now gone on their phone and now they're five minutes so like there's no consistency between each set so then like yes you've hit four sets of five at 90 kilos but you add two minutes rest between set one and two you then add three minutes rest between sets like Mm -hmm. Uh, two and three and then you had six minutes rest between sets three and four yeah. so it's like if you had two minutes rest or three minutes rest between those sets what would you have done does that make sense like, yeah and I, I i've been more consistent with monitoring my own rest periods on my bigger compound movement because i realized how much of a difference it makes yeah when i rest like if i'm gonna rest like five or six minutes between a set of squats like I'm pretty much going to shift that weight very close to how I did the set before. Yeah. If I rest two to three minutes, it's completely different. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, I mean, so if I, I don't actually, you probably don't really use rest very often as a form of progressive overload, but if I was to use it, I still think it needs to be, it obviously still needs to be used in the right context. And what I mean by that is like, we spoke earlier about having giving a specific rep range of like six to eight for the example that we used but i I would give i would still prescribe i wouldn't prescribe a window but in my mind i'd have a window so for example if we're doing five sets of five and they're starting out at five minutes rest you know i might over time progress them down to having three minutes rest like you wouldn't end up doing something stupid of doing like five sets of five with 30 seconds rest because in reality the, the amount of weight that they're going to have to use then is sign- going to need to significantly drop. So you still got to make sure you're providing adequate rest to get the stimulus that you're looking for from the sets and reps. And that would be dictated by energy systems, right? Yeah, pretty much. So like yeah. d- d- taking into some kind of consideration what you need like yep. to recover, what, what needs to be recovered. And like we've done a really good episode on energy <laughs> systems before, which like I had a few kind of like, blow my mind moments mm. when we were speaking about energy systems because like it's always confused me but looking at rest periods just yep. to manage the energy energy systems you're going to use during a set or during exercises just yep. really interesting yeah and, and that, that's pretty much how i would guide my guide my rest period so yeah it would it wouldn't be a case of just oh let, you know let's work our way all the way down until you're doing five sets of five and you've got 15 seconds rest between sets because you're just completely taking it out of context and completely missing the point of the stimulus. And that's really interesting. Sorry, I've had one of those. They, I've, I've heard them called blinding flashes of the obvious because it's like the reason when you look or you someone who may have just gone through their personal training course or like someone who's been a personal trainer who doesn't quite understand like why something's the way it is. It's like if you were to look at like a standard program, like people prescribe like longer rest periods for heavier weights and like powerlifters, you see them resting for longer periods of time. And it's like the bro in me just goes, ah, I kind of just need to recover like it's heavy, but like doesn't realize that actually you're waiting for mm. your energy systems to yeah. replenish. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. So that changes like 
the way I program that yeah. changes when I look at right. I'm using eight to twelve reps, which means I'm going to be hitting this energy system, which means I need this amount of rest. Yep. It's like yep. ah, right, sweet, got makes, you. Makes programming easier, right? Yes, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Like I know it sounds stupid, but like I think, and I'm so guilty for this. Is like the 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 base level of understanding some is is can be enough for you to get by until it's not yeah and what i mean by that is like you can get by with a with minimal knowledge if you're a coach just by knowing the basics but then as soon as something doesn't work the way you think it's going to work or someone asks you a question as to why and you don't know that deeper level it's like oh no like yeah. i'm unstuck here and i i get them quite often and i'm like i I find it really interesting now, like, right, I've got to understand why this is happening. I've got to understand why this is happening. And you can go all the levels deep until you've hit a PhD, but like, you need to still have some level of understanding as to why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, yeah, you're going to go on a journey depending on how long you've been coaching people, but you should always strive to have some form of rationale and reasoning behind why you've got certain exercises, why they're in a certain order, why you're doing certain rep ranges, why you've got certain rest periods. Like, because otherwise you're just, you're just picking exercises for the sake of it, really. But it's, I think it goes into like the same as why people train the way they do or why beginners like find, or why people new to the gym either drop off or like find it hard to take like the advice or find it hard to understand if they're the person who needs to go harder or needs to pull back. Yeah. It's like, it's the same reason as why I didn't want to, why I didn't go, oh, I don't know enough. Yeah. It's just the ego thing that kicks in of like, I don't want to highlight what I don't know right now. Yeah. Because like, what I do know, I need to hold on to because it's all I've got. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, absolutely. It's such like, it, I think it's such a natural thing for humans to just want to hoard and like, it's kind of scarcity and just keep hold of things. Yeah. It's amazing how much that bleeds over into everyone's every other aspect of your life when it comes into like if that's human nature is to just collect things then when i collect information i don't want to highlight to people i want to highlight people that i've got information yeah. but i don't have all of this information do you know what i yeah, mean yeah of course and it's like i know that's natural but for me i find it really 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 interesting like the more i become aware of like how much i am unaware yeah and how much i don't know yeah is the more I really, really start to enjoy the journey of it yeah. more because I was so concentrating on what I do know because I was so afraid to look at what I don't know because I know how big that cupboard is. Yeah. And it's like, but it's the same with every single aspect of every part of everyone's life. It's like, it, it's, almost, <laughs> it's just part of the learning process, isn't it? Yeah. I just, it, it's the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And the, the Dunning Kruger effect is like, yeah hit you from nowhere smack in the face <laughs> with everything yeah it's funny though when you get those because when you get when you realize that's what's happening yeah. and you're like oh no like i look back and i'm like i'm so sorry to all of my clients who yeah, were yeah. with me in the first yeah. year but, <laughs> it's like yeah but then but i like i guess the conversation i was just having um with one of the girls like on the personal training course that mark runs is like you've got to like you've got to start somewhere and you've got to get experience because that's part of that's one of the ways you gain the knowledge and gain the understanding of what you don't know it's because like when you first same as training like if you think adding weight is going to be the one sole way you progress but you don't realize that your form kind of needs to be very similar your rest times kind of need to be similar your tempo needs to kind of be similar for, to make that weight progression actually give you the progress the result of progressive overload that you're looking for like you won't know that until you start training and you start looking at all these things. And it's the same as any, any, any avenue you go down when you're on a learning process or you're trying to improve is like, until you start doing it, you don't know. Like, yeah. um, the next one. So after rest periods, where, where do you think you'd go after that? Um, maybe range of motion. I yeah. think so. You know, we can increase the, the the range of motion that people are people are working in, and obviously, this is really only going to be applicable to certain exercises. Um, 
there's going to be some exercises where you're just increasing range of motion for the sake of increasing range of motion. And there's a difference between, <laughs> there's a difference between, so for example, if we were to take a pec fly, there's a difference between the amount of range of motion you can create in your arm and the amount of range of motion we can create to, to target the pec muscle. So like we're talking about full range of motion within the anatomical variation of the, of the muscle for the individual, which is probably a bit too deep for where we're at now. But so, you know, realistically, this is going to be applicable to only certain exercises. And for example, you could take like, one exercise I quite like doing is if we could we could take a a, re, a re, reverse lunge and we could take it to like a front foot elevated reverse lunge. So you stand on something that's I don't know an inch to an inch and a half high, and then you reverse lunge off that. And then and this is a thing that I find quite funny. It's like I get clients to do that sometimes, but they don't take their knee all the way to the ground, and it's kind of like. It we're just completely defeating the object of the of the deficit here yeah so like we still got to go full range yeah it's like yeah. we may as well just stay on the ground otherwise i kind of like and that's the but that's the conversation you, you have to have with clients when you're yeah. kind of going through that is like the reason we use range of motion is because it's gonna be harder yeah do you know what i mean like yeah we're gonna take you to we're gonna put your like muscles in probably more of a lengthened position than they've been yeah. in yeah and like putting you under load there is gonna feel very very helpful. yeah and usually like the you know how we create this additional range of motion usually places like additional range at the end of the eccentric so like like you say putting things in more of a lengthened position and that's for most people a really weak position in most exercises so you know it hurts. It's hard. Is that because it creates they doms? Don't use it. Yeah, you just it's, it's a range that people you just don't ever go to. So, like, I kind of explained it to clients when when people can't do a push up, yeah, and they can do like three quarters of a push up, yeah, they can't go chest to floor, yeah, and they say the chest to floor, like, oh, really hurts, like, yeah, that's because you're so closed all the time. We're yeah. on your laptop, you're so bent over in this hunched position with shoulders forward that, like your chest doesn't hasn't been to that open yeah. position it's the same as when you see people doing pull-ups just like right let's work on eccentric pull-ups and they're nice and controlled to begin with and they get to like the last little bit and all they do is drop yeah so they yeah. never control that last bit like that very end range eccentric component is it's, it's a weak position for a lot of people so they they don't they don't want to be there or they just try and rush their way through that position yeah which is why like if you think about your he said if you think about the what we've mentioned earlier with tempos when you pair that with range of motion in the sense of like i'm going to try to make every exercise go through its fullest range take every muscle through like its fullest range of motion like you want to do that and make sure like those end ranges are really controlled because like you could go through the full range of motion but like you will like you'll go you go at the right tempo for the middle part yeah and then the first bit's really quick or the last bit's really quick and it's like yeah. s try and control everything and that's like what when i think of the things i'm saying on a constant basis to clients it's like mm. slow that bit down increase the speed of that bit like does that make sense oh like, i have that conversation all the time just like it, the the area where people change direction in exercises and just like slow that down i want to i want to know there's a definite change of direction yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But I think people try and rush it because, like, for most places, that change of direction is, like, it's a weak position in all exercises. So people just try and rush through it because they know it's going to be hard. So just try and get through it faster. Yeah. But you're just, nine times out of ten, all that really starts to happen is, especially if you're talking about things like a lunge or a squat or something like that, all that happens is people just lose positions and they lose control yeah. and they just end up wobbling around all over the place. And, yeah, it... It's harder, it, it feels harder to do it slower, but you're going to have so much more control over the positions in the long term. It's going to definitely going to be better for you. That's so funny because like, I, I look at all my training and I do it all of the time. Like I know when I'm getting towards a heavy weight because like, everything I've done up to that point goes out the window. It's yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Scared yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, but, but then I think like if you're at that point, like you could probably maybe afford for th things that, especially if you've got like, years and years of experience of training yeah. again that is potentially another form of progressive overload yeah. you know if you say 100%. right i'm going to go tempo 
But then on this last rep, I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to make the tempo, but I just want to get, I need to get an extra rep. Like you could just fire it out. It's still an, it's still an extra rep. But again, I would say that I would only use that in a way for somebody who's like a, a more advanced trainer. Yeah. So because that, otherwise they're just not going to have the control. No. And that's, but that's part of the reason we we'll use tempo and range of motion paired together is because to control the ranges of motion to be able to teach someone to control their body and that's why like part of part of the fact that tempo and range of motion is in here isn't only because of the demand it puts on your muscles it's actually because of the technique that we can drill into you by slowing a movement down and making you move for its full range of motion because Mm -hmm. you're then performing the exercise like to the best of your ability and its ability um under control and then the loading of the weight that goes on top of that yeah is going to build is going to be the biggest yeah biggest thing exactly it's actually a little bit like which we'll mention it but i don't think we should do too much right now because we could maybe do a whole other episode on this kind of stuff but it's actually a little bit like partials that you could use partials at the end of a set yeah to try and get some additional volume in as a form of progressive overload yes well this is the interesting thing of like learning the other day um like from jordan peters when he says about you the length and position yeah. fatigues sorry the shortened position fatigues much sooner than the length and position yeah. so you could actually still get some extra volume into that length and position yeah so interesting yeah like because then you can start this is a thing that bodybuilders do when they don't realize why they were doing it but yeah. when they were doing it is partials didn't they didn't realize that Mm. But the reason partials are so good is because you're take you're using that stronger position. If yeah. that makes sense, yeah, like it's really really interesting. Like I'll see you'll see people doing certain things in the gym, and you'll be like, "Why are they doing that?" Like, and you're just like, "Well, I guess I'll just do it." Yeah, it's kind of like when you're doing a pec fly and you can't get all the way in. There's still gonna be you know some benefit to just doing like a couple of yeah. half reps at the end. But again, like you know we could maybe an episode on like maybe like slightly more advanced ways to progressive progressively overload rather than yeah because i mean we've got or i guess like we've got like sets is written down here and we'll go through that in a minute but we've got additional exercises as well yep. like and like supersets and stuff like yeah. that and i guess like maybe we do a whole episode on intensifiers and things like that yeah. as a way to keep progressing yeah because i think like supersets although it is a form of progressive overload like it's such a big form like it's a whole other exercise yeah it completely changes it for me like it changes one exercise like i love doing straight sets on things like i find it purely because i really enjoy trying to get better each week when in supersets but you do a lot of supersets yeah and things like mechanical drop sets like there's so there's so many we should maybe do we'll do an episode on like more advanced ways yeah i think so to intensify exercises we um we need to set a camera up. Yeah, we set a camera up right here. We'll find a way. What of you? <laughs> Honestly, you should see the room we're in. It's brilliant. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I just love that, like the air vents within this room. Like, we should get in there. Do you reckon he'd let? <laughs> if that was empty, we'd do it in there. I'd do it in there. We could turn that. That'd be loads better. Do you reckon we could convince him? Don't know. I don't know where I put all that stuff. When the change moves are done, maybe. That's beautiful. That's a good shout. Because it? there's you could foam pad that room. Yeah. Or to be confirmed. That used to be a sauna. Did it? Mm. Shut up. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Wait, what was this then? I don't know. If change, that was a sauna, room, maybe. I don't know. This building's so old. Um, last one we set. Yeah. So. Just increase the amount of sets. Yeah, do. just doing like an extra set, maybe. But again, like could drastically in- increase volume. I think if like yeah. if you notice what we've done is we've worked our way through these. We've we've listed them in a way where the amount of additional work you have to do is kind of like almost the smallest. So we've gone from like you can add weight, and that being like you can add a kilo. So like yeah. it's a very a very small amount of weight we can add reps like you can add one extra rep like it's a very small amount whereas like and now we're working our way down to like adding adding a whole extra set so like the amount of additional stimulus that creates is so great yeah that 
it you know it can cause a lot of damage and I, and i think i think i think a lot of people if they if they trained properly and progressively like you'd be surprised how little work you need to actually be able to get stronger this is something that i just find really amazing like and it's it does work and it's just like trying to just put all of your effort into the sets you do do mm. rather than just spreading that effort over periods of sets and like that's the, the the reason i think i like to use multiple sets for things and i've realized this over the years of programming is purely if it's a skill thing if i'm yeah. trying to nail an exercise down i want to put someone through four or five sets of that exercise so each time i can correct something and it's the same with myself like if i'm trying to nail a movement pattern i it's a big lift that i'm trying to make sure i hit i do every lift exactly the same i want to hit multiple sets of that exercise to make sure i can adjust my form when needed like whereas when it is just like an output movement of like yep. chucking myself on a machine fly for example like I don't necessarily need to do a ton of sets. I just need to push towards that failure yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's progressive overload. I think like the kind of applicable thing in the takeaway we want to give you is like being deliberate with your choice of progressive overload and understanding like when and where's the right place to put it in that sense. And like where we've spoken about weight and kind of the whole way through this, we've spoken about as and when and why to change a certain thing and like to add a certain kind of progressive like a, a way to progress we've gave you like the ways to do that and why we do it um, mm -hmm. is there like anything specific you want to say on that because well i think it's just like it comes back to we talk about it a lot in terms of like being consistent and that's you know a key component to, to actually making progress in a gym and i think if you're not being deliberate and being consistent with your progressive overload then realistically you're probably just not being consistent overall like don't like one week go oh this week i'm going to add some weight and now i'll like now i'll change the tempo and and now i'll now i'll do an, an extra rep and now i'll do an extra set because it, because if you're doing that you've actually got no measure of if you're getting stronger or not because you're always doing something different there's too many variables going on so try and be deliberate with 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 your your form of progressive overload. So for for example, for the first four weeks, could you just kind of, you know, you might want to start with tempo to begin with, just especially if you're new, because it's a nice easy one to, to keep control over, over movements. So you maybe progress the tempo as the weeks go by, like add an additional second on the way down, add an additional second in the pause component, for example, and then on, do that for four weeks then the second four weeks now you could start maybe looking at increasing weight for example so like be deliberate with your choice of progressive overload because if you're not you're going to struggle to actually track if you're making progress yeah i think that's why programming is so difficult is when you look at what we've mentioned these those are ways to like progressive overload is each week trying to progress someone it's the same as like when we change exercises it's trying to progress you like that's always what we're trying to do with training i guess in life is can we progress each week and what can we change or add or take away to keep that progression going in a like consistent pattern so that's why like all of the things we've mentioned is things we play around with when it comes to programming for someone so like for you that's why it might seem confusing of like well what do i do and when do i do it and it's like for me it's like it's learn to do the exercise get the exercise to a point where your form's pretty good or reasonably good then from there start to add weight start to add reps um and just keep it keep like when, because if your exercise if it looks good chances are your tempo's pretty good two seconds down two seconds up is like kind of just an easy standard for people when they're first starting out yeah um taking it through its fullest range of motion that you can under control then week to week keeping that form the same and just increasing the reps or the weight yep boom good enjoyed that one yeah that was um, good. amazing so um we'll keep going with this every week every yeah. week we're on track so far every week we're two weeks in and we haven't missed a week this is mm -hmm. great um amazing so thank you very much for listening and we'll see you on the next one
In the intro, I felt like I was like an over-excited puppy, or like I'm just one of these train. I saw a thing the other day which was like, don't you just hate it when trainers are overexcited about exercise, or trainers get too excited about exercise? Good job, isn't it? Isn't that isn't that what we're supposed to do? Um, I'm pretty sure I gotta like exercise to be able to talk about it as much as I do. Um, but I, th I uh, going off of that, this is a massive tangent. That was progressive overload. This is more about the mentality when it comes to training. Genuinely believe that most people, most of the time, think that like you don't ha you have to love training. Or you've got to change your life completely to enjoy it. And it's not that way at all. You have just got to find a way to be a little bit fitter and a little bit healthier for whatever reason, whether it's to change your body image, whether it's you've got a goal for performance, like strength, fitness, any type of activity like that, or whether it's just because like you want to live longer so you can like play with your grandkids when you're older. I think whatever your reason, health and fitness can fi fit into your life, whether that's half an hour once a week or whether that's kind of two hours every day it doesn't necessarily matter what it is um this is just an avenue for self-improvement and this is just a way to meet other people who are trying to do the same thing um i'm not going to babble on anymore but thank you so much um i guess brian to let you know what we're doing elsewhere myptcourse.com is going back to myptcourse.com company is just called my pt course charlie um, but my PT course is going back to live days. Um, we've done our first l couple of live days now. We're going into the last couple as we go up towards Christmas. Um, when it comes to 2023, we have four courses running with live days within them. Um, I think there's like seven to 10 live days in each course. And it's basically going to teach you how to deliver exercise and how to perform exercises correctly. So if you're looking to become a level three personal trainer and you're not sure about doing an online course because you want to learn a bit more about how to actually perform exercises, then myptcourse.com would be where I would head to have a look at what courses we're running, when we're running them, and if it suits you. Majority of the course is done online. All of the assessments and all of the lectures are online, and there is a ton, a ton of information on there. But when it comes to the practical elements of personal training, which I believe shouldn't ever be taken away from it, like the online was great during COVID, but I believe in-person training. You will learn so much from this course. Um, so come on down to that one, guys. That would be great. If you want to find me or Mark, um, Mark's at Mark Origin Series on Instagram and his company's, if you type in origin-series.com online, you will find um, Mark's company. Mine's Hat the Body, Hat the Mind on Instagram and in Google. Um, we, different people, different points of views, different companies, looking to do very similar things of help people so hopefully you can find some support i think like i know mark's got a lot of like courses on there when it comes to nutrition and things like that again like if you want to become a pt look look towards to go origin series if you're looking for like group programming stuff like that both myself and mark offer programming and group programs um for me if you're i've got a lot of free resources as in blogs and i've got a live webinar which talks all about like um fat loss yeah fat loss jesus why is this so difficult talks about muscle building and fat loss and just like how to get the best body composition you want so try if you can to have a look at that it's a free webinar it's about an hour long with some like questions totted on at the end for that um but that's normally gives people a good understanding of the first place to go when it comes to improving the way they look so hopefully guys this gives you a good understanding of what to do um and where to find us thank you so much if you can leave us a five-star rating review on iTunes, you can screenshot this, share this on um, Instagram. We'd be very, very appreciative, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you on the next one.